Next up on our endocrine disorders journey is the calcium, the thyroid, and the parathyroid. Well, really just the parathyroid for right now. So, calcium and the parathyroid hormone relationships. So, as you can see, the effects of, so, this left side of the diagram actually shows uh, the effect of immobility. So, if you're confined to your space or you're unable to move or exercise or exert your muscles, um, the effects on serum calcium levels and uh, parathyroid hormone. So, immobility will cause the bones to release calcium because your bones are no longer building up due to the exercise or stress on the bone they're going to actually release the calcium. This will cause an increase in the blood calcium levels. Okay, High blood calcium levels uh, inhibit parathyroid uh, secretion and then this will cause low parathyroid hormone okay. now, low parathyroid hormone uh, will never go back up because the pathology uh, because of the immobility we will never we will never get the amount of parathyroid hormone that we actually need for bone deposition. Now let's look over here at this example which is the effects of renal disease. So with renal disease the uh, is going to result in low calcium blood levels. The low calcium blood levels because the calcium is going to be spilled in the urine uh, is going to cause stimulate the parathyroid gland. So low calcium levels is going to secrete high serum of parathyroid gland, and this is, but we will not be able to bring back up our calcium levels because the renal disease is causing the calcium to keep going. So you have this really high uh, parathyroid uh, hormone level, but you don't have. In, in turn, it does not release the calcium from the bones. So the parathyroid hormone and calcium. Um, you can have hypoparathyroidism, which means low parathyroid hormone. This is going to lead to low calcium levels, hypocalcemia. Um, and hypocalcemia, as you we went over on the first section, um, has an increase uh, can cause weak cardiac muscle contractions because you need a lot of calcium to uh, stimulate well for the heart muscles to contract and then it also increases the excitability of nerves so you actually can have spontaneous contractions of skeletal muscle so uh, low calcium levels can have uh, problems with your nerves. You'll probably we'll probably see on the next slide that high levels also can do the same thing. Well, also have problems problems with your nerves. Uh, the causes of the parathyroid hormone, the hypoparathyroidism, could be uh, a tumor where it destroys the parathyroid gland, a congenital lack of parathyroid little parathyroids on the back of the thyroid gland. Uh, surgery or radiation in the neck region due to some kind of cancer or maybe you had hyperparathyroidism and then they removed it. Now you're hypoparathyroidism. Also autoimmune dis response uh, that uh, can destroy the parathyroid glands. Okay. Hyperparathyroidism will result in hypercalcemia, which is really high levels of calcium. Um, this can cause more forceful calcium con uh, cardiac contractions, so your, your, your heart's actually beating too hard. Um, this also leads to osteoporosis because you're breaking down the 
bone to increase the calcium levels and then due to these high levels of calcium um, in the blood it can also lead to kidney stones because you have high levels of calcium in the urine um, and produce the kidney stones um, causes again a tumor um, it can be secondary to renal failure um, we saw that process where you, the renal failure caused low calcium levels which in turn caused hyper, hyper, I mean, the parathyroid hormone to be uh, excessively secreted and then paraneoplastic syndrome which is a um, type of uh, growth or a uh, tumor well it's more of a cancerous growth um, Okay. We can see the comparisons uh, on the different systems uh, as far as hypoparathyroidism versus uh, hyper, this should be hyper over here, hypercalcemia. Um, the nervous system increased excitability, triggered muscle spasms, which may have low calcium. Um, high calcium is going to have decreased excitability, apathy, fatigue. It can also even change your personality. Um, skeletal muscles uh, can cause skeletal muscle spasms. Uh, with hypo, if it's high calcium levels, you can have decreased we increased weakness um, of these skeletal muscles and decreased tone. Um, with the heart, it's kind of the opposite. You have weak contractions for hypocalcemia. And with hypercalcemia, you have uh, forceful contraction, more, and also it can lead to arrhythmias, uh, increased heart rate, and hypertension. Um, gastrointestinal uh, situation, increased peristalsis, diarrhea, nausea, cramps for hypocalcemia, and then with hyper, you can see constipation, nausea. And in the bones, we can see uh, more fractures due to osteoporosis, which is osteoporosis, which is the demineralization of the bone due to the hyper uh, the parathyroid hormone causing the calcium to be released. Um, next up, we have the pituitary hormones. Um, one of the most common causes of pituitary disorders are adenomas, which are uh, tumors. Or growth in the pituitary, in the uh, the anterior pituitary. Um, these can lead to uh, pressure uh, in the skull because the pituitary is closely associated with the uh, brain. It's actually right below it, and the growth can co increase the intracranial pressure and can lead to headaches, seizures, drowsiness, and even uh, visual uh, deficits. Um, depending on the tumor, whether it's secreting ho hormones or it's not, it could uh, have various effects. It's just dependent on what cells uh, form the adenoma and what, what location has been uh, displaced or destroyed. It could be excessive or decreased or released. So, some examples of, of problems with the growth hormone is dwarfism. Um, this is where during the uh, child's years grow, uh, there was a deficit, 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 deficit <laughs> in the growth, of hormone, growth hormone production and release. So due to the lack of the growth hormone the child never will or is, uh, grow to a normal height. Then you can have excess growth hormone secretion, uh, which can lead to gigantism, which is where we have the, the above average growth. And it can actually, has to, if it's before puberty, and the fusion of the epiphyses. If the bones growth plates fuse 
and then we have an increase in growth hormone that can lead to acro acromegaly which is where we have excess growth in adults these are typically associated with adenoma this causes the bones can no longer grow in length so they grow in width and become heavier and broader um, this can also lead to growth in soft tissue which can enlarge the hands and feet and change facial features and it's a very uh, distinctive um, look because uh, even like over the eyebrows and things those, those parts of the skull will thicken um, and here you can see uh, two normal individuals in the middle and then there's uh, individual that has been affected with uh, gigantism and down at the other end you can see an individual that is affected by uh, dwarfism. Next hormone up on our list of the integrin system hormones is the antidiuretic hormone. This hormone is primarily responsible for uh, the reuptake of water uh, from the kidney so that we don't have this excess urination so without this antidiuretic hormone uh, or we end up with a condition called diabetes insipidus um, I remember how I said diabetes mellitus dealt with urination due to the sugar diabetes insipidus is a deficiency of ADH so we have excess amount of urine um, typically caused by uh, adenoma. Um, it can also cause by brain injury at the neurohypophysis um, uh, or possible genetic defects. Um, without this, it, you rapidly dehydrate, you know, gallons of urine a day. Uh, replacement treatment is required or you will die from dehydration. Um, then we could also have uh, inappropriate ADH syndrome, which is where we have ex excess antidiuretic hormone, um, which could be triggered by stress or, or some kind of ectopic source such as a tumor. Um, this is going to cause you to have an extreme amount of retention of water. So the opposite, uh, the treatment for this would be for a diuretic to increase urine amount and also sodium uh, supplements because ADH is associated with sodium levels. <sighs> so here is the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid gland feedback system. So the hypothalamus connects the brain to the endocrine system. So typically we have some kind of nerve impulse or hormonal impulse, I mean a stimulus that goes to the hypothalamus. So it could be uh, cold or stress or something. Okay. This is dealing with the thyroid. So we're dealing with cold or stress with the thyroid. And this is going to cause the hypothalamus to send thyroid releasing hormone, TRH, down to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary will cause TSH to be released. So the t t thyroid stimulating hormone. The thyroid stimulating hormone travels down to the thyroid. The thyroid is stimulated to secrete T3 and T4, which are two hormones that will increase the target cell's metabolism. It'll cause you to warm up little jittery it kind of increase that metabolism excess amount of T3 and T4 will then inhibit the secretion of TSH and TRH 
So this is a negative feedback system. Once we have enough of it, it shuts itself off. And once we warm back up. Okay. And, it, and we can look at different breakdowns of the system. So in this case of a goiter or enlargement of the thyroid, it can be caused for several different reasons. One is an endemic goiter. This is due to uh, a hypothyroid condition where there is low iodine levels in the soil and the food. So if you look on this diagram, you can see T3 and T4. T3 and T4 hormones are actually uh, have the element iodine in them and they're used for the production of T3 and T4. So if the TSH is produced but yet there's no T3 and T4, these cells, uh, the, the T3 and T4 cannot go back up and shut off TRH and TSH. Since it cannot perform this negative feedback, what do we do? We continue to produce TSH. So the TSH is constantly being secreted and it's going to be in very high levels and it's going to cause the, gore, uh, the thyroid to grow and grow and grow but it's no longer going to be able to produce T3 and T4. Since it can't produce T3 and T4, we can't shut it down so it just continues to grow so it's, it's a cycle that cannot be broken without iodine. So that's the endemic gorder. Uh, we can have gorders that come from gordotrogens which are at foods that can block the synthesis of T3 and T4. So you get an iodine but you, there's some type, you've, uh, you've ate too much of a specific food or a specific uh, vitamin or a specific something and it's no longer been able to make it and that causes a gorder. Then also from a toxic gorder which is due to a hyperactivity of the thyroid gland. So this is uh, more intrinsic to the thyroid gland is messed up. It's not based off of it's running rampant without the uh, hormonal control. You can see here endemic order, order enlargement in the neck. Okay. And then we have hyperthyroidism caused by Graves' disease. Okay. This is where we have a uh, autoimmune factor, basically an antibody um, or a factor in the immune system that mimics the TSH hormone. So the autoimmune factor stimulates the hormone and there's no negative feedback to shut it off. Okay, so the autoimmune factor is going to stimulate the thyroid to continuously produce T3 and T4. And the T3 and T4 are going to cause the target tissues to have a higher than normal metabolism, a hypermetabolism, and will continuously uh, assimilate the sympathetic nervous system, which is, you know, the fight or flight nervous system. And those two together are going to cause a variety of conditions of the body, which are going to be increased body temperature, sweating, soft, silky hair and skin. Uh, that might be a plus. Uh, a reduced BMI, which is causing the hypermetabolism, causes you to lose weight. But also insomnia and hyper, uh, be very hyperactivity, jittery. Uh, and things of that nature. Um, you might also have exothalamus, which is where your eyeballs protrude um, and have decreased blink and eye movement. Um, so you can see here a uh, toxic, at least to a toxic gorder, constantly producing that T3 and T4. Um, and that's what exothalamus, exothalamus. Thalamus uh, looks like. Then we have hypothyroidism, 
Um, we can have it from very different, various reasons. We can have iodine deficiency. We talked about that with the goiter, unable to actually make T3 and T4. We can have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, which is the autoimmune disease of where the immune system attacks the thyroid and tries to destroy it. Also, tumors, uh, surgical removal and treatment of the gland um, can, can um, cause hypothyroidism. Um, during early development, if hypothyroidism occurs, you can have creatinism, which um, results in a very short stature and there's severe cognitive defects. Um, this is untreated congenital hypothyroidism. Um, may be related to iodine deficiency during the pregnancy. Um, treatment with uh, T3 and T4 can help alleviate some of the uh, symptoms if it's caught early enough. Uh, hypothyroidism manifestations. Gorder if it's due to the iodine deficiency. Uh, intolerance to cold because the metabolism is so slow your, your body temperature is low. The lethargic, you're going to have increased BMI, the metabolism stuff. Uh, decreased appetite, you're not eating but you're still gaining weight. Uh, mixed edema uh, is severe and treated in hypothyroidism, which is uh, non pitting uh, edema in the face, uh, thick and tongue. Uh, mixed edema co coma, where actually you have uh, acute hypotension, which could lead into like almost a shock because the blood pressure goes low. Hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Your metabolism is super thermal, hypothermia, um, loss of consciousness. So, can, severe hypothyroidism can have very se severe con consequences. Um, here's a little chart for comparison. You can see hypothyroidism, we have low T3 and T4, metabolic rate is low. Hyperthyroidism, T3 and T4 is high, and a high metabolic rate. Okay. May be present, a gorder may be present with either one depending on what uh, situation occurs. Uh, with Graves' disease, you know, you have the uh, anti, the factor constantly stimulating the thyroid so it grows larger. Uh, with the uh, endemic uh, gorder, you have low T3 and T4, so you're stimulating the thyroid with TSH constantly. Um, you're going to be cold and edemic uh, with uh, hypothyroidism, flushed and warm with hyperthyroidism. One has a cold intolerance, one has a heat intolerance. Eyes normal. Exothalamus. Exophthalmus, I can't even say it right now, with Graves' disease. Uh, with the cardiovascular system, uh, bradycardia, which is a slow heartbeat with large heart with hypothyroid tachycardia, increased with, uh, with high blood pressure. You're lethargic, slow, tired, all those types of things, increased body weight with hypo, restless, nervous, tremors, thin, increased appetite with hyperthyroidism. Okay, so that's hypo and hyperthyroidism. Next gland on our list is uh, the adrenal gland. And looking at the middle, the medulla of the adrenal gland, we can talk about the fia pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor inside of the adrenal medulla. And it's a benign tumor, which means it's not spreading like cancer. It's from one tissue to the next, but it's still growing, and it could uh, actually possibly secrete uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and that can cause problems where, you know, over secretion of that, always jittery, always fight or flight. Occasionally there can be multiple tumors, um, some of the side effects are, well, some of the symptoms are headache, heart palpitations, sweating, intermittent, 
and constant anxiety. So you're constantly uh, on that fight or flight reflex with the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, with the cortex or the outer portion of the adrenal gland, you can see uh, Cushing syndrome, which can be caused by co excessive le level of glucocorticoids. Um, and these glucocorticoids, these uh, hormones, are overproduced due to several reasons. We could have an adrenal adenoma, which is a tumor in the uh, adrenal cort in the uh, adrenal gland. It could be a tumor from the pituitary gland that is sending the signal for the adrenal gland to secrete glucocorticoids. Could be an ectopic carcinoma where you have some tissue, some cancerous tissues, uh, cancer somewhere else in the body producing glucocorticoids. Um, it could be iatrogenic conditions or even substance abuse. So lots of different reasons to cause Cushing's disease. So what is Cushing's syndrome? Um, you're looking for a round face with a ruddy color, truncal obesity, which is obesity of the trunk with a fat pad that develops between the scapula, so it's almost like a humpback, thin limbs, um, typically the arms and legs are a lot thinner, with thin hair, with fragile skin, with increased likelihood of stretch marks, which are stria. Okay. You can see here's the sub supraclavicular fat pad here, um, thinning hair, um, mood swings and zombie have lost of libido, um, hair I can't say hirsutiums is which is hair growth, moon face and ruddy con uh, ruddy complexion, uh, the stretch marks, um, thinning of pupillary and axillary hair in women. Uh, the extremities are typically thin and you have truncal obesity. And then here is Addison's disease where you have the uh, opposite, kind of the opposite, where you have a deficiency of adrenocorticoid secretions. Um, common cause is due to autoimmune reaction where you destroy the part of the adrenal gland or it can be destroyed by hemorrhage or infection. Um, the manifestations include decreased uh, blood glucose levels, inadequate stress response, fatigue, weight loss, probably due to decreased blood glucose levels, um, frequent infections, and since these adrenal corticoids also affect uh, some of the sodium levels. We can see that there's low ser serum sodium concentration. Okay, and if we have low sodium levels in the blood, this can decrease the blood volume because water is going to follow sodium. And since the water less sodium is in the blood, we're going to see less water in the blood, and can lead to hypotension and shock. Tension. Um, and high potassium levels. Okay. So, just a comparison. Addison's disease is a deficit of corticosteroids. Cushing's is an excess. And see those mineral corticoids are the ones that uh, deal with the sodium levels. Um, both have increased uh, risk for infection and both have uh, poor stress response because they're unable to use uh, those corticoid levels to go up or down. Um, Addison's disease is more typically weight loss fatigue, anorexia, nausea, diarrhea, hypertension, syncope, and hyperpigmentation which is more pigment in the skin. Okay, and we kind of already went over some of the symptoms of, I mean, the Cushing syndrome. So, um, good luck, y'all. Have a good day. Uh, please make sure you uh, go over those case studies off your own your assignment sheet. Um, 
and hopefully see you soon.